In this video, we introduce the concept of the rate determining step. All right, and we're going to do that in the context of consecutive reactions. Uh, this is what a consecutive reaction looks like. You have that in order to go from reagents to products, you go through an intermediate. And then what we've done in a prior video is derive the integrated rate loss for each one of the species intervening in the reaction, reagent, intermediate, and product. All right, that's a graph of how these concentrations evolve in time. Now what we're going to do is take this uh, analysis and we're going to apply one approximation, or we're, we're going to examine how this turns out to be under a, a very specific set of conditions. The very specific set of conditions is that this K2 rate constant that controls the reactivity of the intermediate products is much greater than the K1 rate constant that controls the uh, reaction of uh, reagents going into the intermediate. Okay, so we take that K2 is much, much larger than K1. All right, so uh, we can take and see how that affects the production of products. Okay, so uh, we can examine what happens to this expression uh, once you um, apply this approximation. Well, we can see here that, that in the denominator, what you're going to have is that you have this number is much greater than that, so you can approximate that by just the following. This is going to be equal to simply K2. Okay, because you can neglect K1 with respect to K2. Now, in the numerator, uh, you also have K1 and K2 uh, here in these uh, coefficients, but you also have, uh, have them in the exponents. Okay? And the exponential dependence is actually much greater. Look, if K2 is much, much greater than K1, what will happen is that this term will be much, 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 much uh, uh, closer to zero than that one. Okay, so as a matter of fact, what will happen is that you can neglect entirely that term okay, with respect to this. And so uh, we can take that, and that is the resultant expression. Okay, and you can see that automatically there's going to be a cancellation here of these K2 terms, those two, and the final uh, rate law for products under uh, these conditions is going to be 1 plus e to the minus k1 t. Okay, so let's, uh, there's a couple of things that are interesting about this expression. One of them is actually much simpler than what we had before, uh, but more importantly, what you see in this expression is that the concentration of product does not depend on the K2 rate constant. Again, that, that rate constant is the one that is uh, very large, okay? Meaning that this process is quite fast. Instead, uh, the reaction rate, okay, notice that I actually have a stick there, that is a negative sign. There we go. Notice that, um, uh, regardless, the concentration of product does not depend on the concentration of, on the uh, rate constant K2. Instead, it only depends on the rate constant of the first step, which is this one. Okay, and this is actually something entirely general. In this particular reaction, you have two steps. One that has a huge rate constant, one that has a very low rate constant. Okay, this will be a very slow step compared to that one. And what we see is that the production of products is only controlled by the rate constant of the slow step. Okay, so again, that is entirely you know, slow steps determine the rate. Okay, so with, with that uh, um, knowledge, then we can uh, go ahead and try to see how we could analyze uh, other reaction mechanisms that we have. For example, let's assume uh, the following reaction mechanism is going to be the overall reaction to A plus B to give C, uh, our products, and uh, this overall reaction mechanism can be divided into two steps. Okay? In the first one we have that A plus B generates C, and the second step is A plus this intermediate C, yeah, it's product. Okay, so again, it's, it's a two-step uh, process, and that will be the overall reaction. Now, what we can do is try to see if we can examine the rate, okay, the rate law, under uh, a couple of set of approximations. The first one, we're going to say this is the slow step. Okay, and that will be your K1, and this will be your K2. What that would mean is this K2 is much, much greater than K1. Because the slow step is going to determine the overall rate, then we can write the overall rate law for the reaction simply as the rate law for this particular step. Okay, so the rate law for the overall reaction okay, will be simply K1, concentration of A, concentration of B. Okay, notice that it looks like here we're neglecting the second step, but that second step is going to be so fast compared to the first one, 
uh, the, f uh, the first step is solely going to determine the rate. That is what the rate determining step means. Uh, you take this lowest step, and that is the one that is going to be responsible for the overall rate of the reaction. Okay, so that would be uh, the rate law in this particular case. But let's assume, uh, yes, for the sake of, of completeness, that uh, uh, there's a, a different reaction in which the first step is not a slow one. Okay, when you compare this K2 and K1 constants, it happens that this is much, much greater than that one. And that would mean that this is the slow step. And then the first one, the first step is, is the fast step. All right, so uh, then we know that the rate law is determined by the slow step in this case. This rate law would be K2, concentration of A, concentration of C. And that would be the rate law for the overall reaction. And again, it appears that the first step is not involved, and that's fine because that's the fast step. It won't determine the rate. Something that is not great about this um, rate law that we just have uh, written right here is that in this particular case, we have here the concentration of C in the rate law. And as you can see in this reaction mechanism, C is not part of the overall reaction. Instead, it's just an intermediate. Okay, so we actually are going to have to learn tools so that we can actually uh, uh, replace C as a function of reagents or occasionally products. Okay, but C cannot appear uh, in the final rate law. And again, we're going to learn in the next videos how to uh, look for ways to replace this or to place this as a function of the concentration of reagents or products. Okay, so this has been an overview of the rate determining step and uh, its application to consecutive reactions.